as you make, if I place the shaft off your trail shoulder, Garrett, mm -hmm. you're gonna feel like you get that right shoulder moving back and inside that shaft, yeah, wow. okay? So we're not moving off it. And as a result, if we just pause our frame there, the trail shoulder's moved in behind the base of your neck, the right leg has started to extend, the trail hip is higher than the lead hip, and you'll notice that your belt buckle has somewhat gone past the inseam of your trouser leg. All right, so talking about the takeaway here, we see a lot of commonalities with recreational golfers, be it with misconceptions or movement patterns from other sports, which essentially gets them moving away from the target a lot in the backswing, right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So one of the things we see a lot of the time of is when, when a player does have too much lateral shift through, uh, call, I call it the rib cage gets out of balance with the pelvis. So if we don't keep them stacked on top of each other, a lot of the time then we're gonna start seeing the forearms roll, club face get open, and that snowballs into a lot of problems through how we load pressure effic efficiently and then how we can ultimately then transition into the, into the downswing. It's just one of those domino effects, right? Is that, and I don't know about you, but I get so many people that come in for a golf lesson and they've been doing the old WebMD self-diagnosis situation. Yeah. And they say, well, I, I know when I look at it, it might get a bit steep and I need to kind of shallow it more. And then you chuck them on camera or you observe a few of their swings and like their front foot's over here. Right. Going, like, let's, <laughs> yeah. let's make our way up the chain a little bit. That's right? it. Yeah. And, it, and it's, the, it's the perception of what, uh, of what players think they should be doing. So uh, a term that I don't often use is weight shift. Okay? I think that's a very misunderstood term as well. A lot, of, a lot of amateur golfers, we see them trying to shift their mass or shift their weight into that trail side. And a lot of the time that then gets them out of balance. So actually being able to decipher the difference between what shifting weight or mass is versus uh, rotation of pressure or rotation of fo or where force application gets sent is, is, a, is a nice concept change as well. Yeah, yeah. So I think as a general reference, one of the, the best sort of uh, checkpoints for players at home that they can use is the association between uh, if you were in your setup position from this face on view where the center of their upper body is, let's say their sternum or their shirt buttons here, Absolutely. and then their belt buckle. And let's call these your, your upper center and your lower center. Perfect. And in the address position, if we were to recreate, let's say, a common pattern that we see with players, it would be that the upper center as a reference from where it started has kind of shifted away too much. And then based on what you were saying, it's like we get the flat shoulder turn, club gets behind, the hands begin to lift. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, that's one of the most common, I guess, misunderstandings. Yeah. So a way that we can often then, I guess, switch that narrative a little bit is by in, in order to get the upper center and lower center working on, on top of each other a little more is understand the relationship between rotation and tilts or rotation and mm -hmm. side bend. So if we had the player in the dress position and I said to that player, okay, let's try to feel like the trail shoulder gets back in behind the base of my neck, yeah, okay, cool. by approximately a half backswing or a P3 movement in the backswing. Okay. So if the, if the club head was on my trail shoulder and I feel like from above my diaphragm or from above, from the rib cage and above, I just create a rotation. The trail shoulder starts to get back in behind the base of my neck. The upper body starts moving on incline tilt, yeah. as does the pelvis as well. We stay completely stacked on top of ourselves. And one of the visuals will often be the lead shoulder starts tracking, tracking down, down and across. The trail shoulder starts working up and behind. And then we start getting that sensation of loading into more the, I guess, the trail heel, trail glute versus actually having that, that lateral shift off the ball. That big movement, yeah. And uh, as, as the face on reference here, and we'll use my head as a sort of a checkpoint there, we generally see these players would then shift their head, all things being equal behind the ball. So yeah. what Richard's saying there is then in regards to the movement of, let's say, the, the upper body versus the lower body, seeing as this here is an approximate for the professional golfer would rotate, let's say 90 degrees as a simplification. That's right. And the lower body somewhere around 45. Correct. Right? So if I'm in my address position and we see that players are kind of moving this too flat, well then sometimes the, the lower body's not really rotating too much. It's all relative to individual mobility to get the job done. But we do see also people as they take the golf club away, um, be it that they're using their hands and their arms too much, but it just gets simply like too fast and too aggressive, right? Absolutely. And the lower body starts to kick in or the hands and then the whole sequence is off. 
Hundred percent, and so it's actually trying to bring in that that I guess that harmony between how do the arms, how does the arm structure move, how does the rib cage move, and how does the pelvis move, and I guess. I like to try to hit on a couple little checkpoints, I guess, for the player. And if the player was was moving efficiently, okay. But, uh, so when I say efficiently, getting the, the upper body and the lower body in the right in the correct sequence, when the player starts their golf swing, the sensation of the rib cage creating a stretch, I guess, mm. through the abdomen on top of that lower body to approximately hip height. And then what you're gonna to start to feel like is the belt buckle as a reference point starts to wind past the inseam of that right trouser leg as oh, the right, right shoulder moves up. So if you were, you know, if we were demonstrating front on to, to a player, it would be a sensation almost like the trail trail leg starts actually creating some extension for a term. Mm -hmm. It won't lock out, but it will mm -hmm. start extending. And the reason why is because the pelvis is now working into some side bend and extension versus when the player gets outside themselves or lateral, okay, the right leg stays very fixed, we lose the rotation, and that's when the, the arm plane gets out of position and the face gets typically pretty open. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we see with a lot of players that are shifting off the golf ball, the, the main reason that as coaches we would look to make some adjustments, unless they're very, they're a thoroughbred and they can make it work, is because they don't have much low point control. So Absolutely. they're hitting behind. So you'll see the professional golfer tend to stay relatively centered to the top of their golf swing. Now, it's not all or nothing. It's not like we're either shifting over here That's or right. we're stacking hard left. There's That's an right. athletic dynamic movement. There are pressure shifts. But in a simplistic fashion, the more on top of the ball you stay yeah. for the amateur golfer, the better. Absolutely. And, and you're 100% right. And that, that is the difference between the weight shift and the pressure shift mm. because the golf swing is incredibly dynamic. It's one of the things that I often relate to the most is even though the ball is static, we are very reactive as athletes to, to the way we move. And a maybe, lot of the, maybe use you more so. Than <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so to, a lot of the time, I think when I say reactive, we're also reacting to what the club face is doing. Yeah. So as human beings, if that club face is, is really open, we're going to do whatever it takes to get that thing back to some point where we can control the club face at impact. So when we make that movement in the backswing, the advantage of moving the upper body and lower body efficiently with each other is a lot of the time that will actually assist in keeping the club face mm. in a more effective position as well versus getting out of position with the club face. So I think as human beings, we react a lot to what this is doing, yeah. but it's driven from potentially concept of how the body's moving through that through that early phase of the backswing. Yeah, so tying a bow on this for the guys at home, essentially your objective when making your initial first movement of the golf swing is that if you can make a relatively centered turn, starting with the upper body, by the time that your lead arm is parallel, you use the reference of your back shoulder, and I'll get you to kind of run me through that drill in a second mm. here. Uh, that is a great checkpoint for the guys at home where they're not going to have to make as many compensations in the downswing. 100%, absolutely. So we can use some checkpoints with where that trail shoulder location is moving or even where the trail side of the rib cage and how the trail side of the rib cage is rotating and extending. I use the term extension a lot because if I have more of a, a, a lateral shift off the ball, if I had the shaft in the middle of my trunk, as I bend into forward, bend into posture, if I rotate and stay in more of a, I guess, into a lateral position on the, on the backswing, that shaft stays pointing down the ground, a state in flexion. Mm. Whereas what you'll see with, I guess, the advanced players when that trail shoulder moves up and behind them, the rib cage actually extends. Does, yeah. So we actually get into that sense of being a lot more, I guess, into a state of extension in the rib cage versus flexed or in flexion with the, with the upper body. Yeah, no, absolutely great drill. Okay, so uh, I, one last thing here is I want you to talk about the benefits of doing this slowly when you're first learning yeah. this movement, as opposed to when I'm doing online lessons or I get players to do this, they go, Okay, done. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So as I get into this position, um, my golf posture, that's very important. Always try and get into your initial golf posture as you would if you were hitting the golf ball. Then maintaining that front bend, maintaining that knee flex so you're in a relative uh, spot as if you're going to hit the shot so you can really ingrain that feel. Now, we're doing this slowly and your reference is... Yeah, so I'm going to get the sensation of... As you make, if I place the shaft off your trail shoulder, Carrot, mm -hmm. you're gonna feel like you get that right shoulder moving back and inside that shaft, yeah, wow. okay? So we're not moving off it. And as a result, if we just pause our frame there, the trail shoulder's moved in behind the base of your neck, the right leg has started to extend, the trail hip is higher than the lead hip, 
and you'll notice that your belt buckle has somewhat gone past the inseam of your trouser leg. It's a great little reference point. That's what we call internal hip rotation, okay, and external hip rotation this side. So your loading is now all right glute, right hamstring, into the base of that right heel, yeah. and that's where we're ready to recenter and really, really get on it on the downswing. Yeah, and it just feels like I'm coiled, and I think I'm just gonna make quick mention to that, is that when you're doing a drill like this, it's always gonna feel tight, because Absolutely. you're doing it slow and static. Now, the golf swing, dynamic athletic movement, you have this stretch of all these muscles as you swing back, so it's not gonna feel as tight when you're yeah. actually swinging the golf club, but taking the time, being patient, slowly mapping out this sensation of the upper body pivoting back, pivoting back, and just feeling, closing your eyes, almost getting a real sensation of this coiling feeling of the upper body going as far as it can, and then the lower body kicking in, the combination of those from the face on, you can see that I just stay relatively centered. Absolutely, and one of, I guess one of the, the, the terms I use in the golf swing is we want to feel like there's a stretch phase yeah. and then a counter stretch phase. Yeah. So you need to feel that stretch uh, on the backswing before we feel that counter stretch into the downswing motion. So doing it slowly and deliberately is absolutely, uh, it's absolutely key for actually learning the new skills. We're trying to ultimately train the brain to actually understand, okay, what is the difference between when I do do it correctly or when I don't do it correctly? Great, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna blend it together and this is a sequence at home, guys, that you can use that Richard's, Richard has given us. So as I set up, I'm just gonna go on the inside of the golf ball because I'm gonna do a little practice swing after this, but let's say my normal golf swing, if I was the recreational golfer that's struggling with this, maybe a big move off the golf ball, I'm then gonna place this golf club across my shoulders, making sure I'm in my golf posture slowly moving the upper body back, feeling like the right shoulder is not moving away in a linear fashion, behind me into that position, nice and coiled up. And then normal practice swing, just getting the same sensation or just the back swing, what would you have Yeah, let's just make the back swing move and let's just really train that feeling in, trail shoulder up and behind the base of the neck, really feeling that, that belt line's really coiled on the inside of that right trouser leg, mm. and hopefully feeling quite wound into that right hip and stretched up in that trail side. Yeah, it feels great, it just feels powerful. So once I've done that a couple of times, let's put it into a swing. Yeah, there you go. Clean, powerful, felt coiled, it's gonna deliver great results. Absolutely, Cheers. man.